good evening i think kiran doesn't need an introduction because you can see him the one of the most active ministers in modi government somewhere he cycling somewhere he jumping somewhere he playing cricket somewhere he doing something else he dedicated not only to his family but to the ministry he is committed for him being the minister for youth affairs and sports is a religion i have never seen a sports minister like this in my life for 35 years journalism who is thinking sports <laughs> even in his dream is playing sports this khelo india abhiyan which they have launched which is modi's plan of getting india to involved into everybody playing because it's ex fit india part is also there if you are playing because he is also participating fit india and you see can theme how fit he is he's 49 year old he is a lawyer by profession he is a belong to political family and comes from arunachal pradesh but he has become in a short period of time from a real minister of state for whom where he was looking after policemen who were used for other purposes now he is involved in promoting sports in india and it's a big challenge for him when i asked him once uh, earlier also he was concerned about it that in a country of 1.3 billion people we don't get three gold medals in the olympics for the last for 50 years once only we got after that we did not get it and why only in india elite sports like cricket is getting all the money but there no money for football there no money for cricket and hockey there no money for volleyball there no money for indigenous games which are indians game like anything else so for him the challenge is how the school should play sports because i see most of the schools have no grounds even where the sports can be played most of the college have stopped playing sports activity so it was it was just an extra curricular activities in many schools and colleges many of the students are sitting here they don't play in the colleges they are only studying most of the time so he must be having some kind of agenda road map where india also studies and also plays that is what i would like him to enunciate and explain to the young india here what is the agenda for khelo india make india healthy and educated at the same time wealth come after that thank you very much kiran prabhu chawla ji ladies and gentlemen it's always very exciting to be in chennai Tamil Nadu and Chennai in particular is a center for many things. When I come here, I see the surroundings and I learn a lot. After all, India is a an amazing nation with different regions, with its own unique characteristics, where we learn from each other. and we try to stand together and share the experiences i come from northeast which is geographically bit isolated and it's having its own unique strength and weaknesses In last one week i have been shuttling to south india going to mangalore back then to tiruvananthapuram back and today again chennai going back so for full 7 days i was heading towards south india tomorrow onwards i'll be heading towards east india the khelo india youth games for the 2020 is going to start from guwahati tomorrow prabhu chawla ji introduced me with my background with my passion actually that is my character wherever i am i try to understand and be there not only physical but mentally also emotionally also when i was in the home ministry i devoted myself to the security of this nation for strengthening of the security system the apparatus reaching out to the people in fact in tamil nadu also i had visited here i was the first union minister to visit the tamil sri lankan tamil refugee camps visited many other areas and in the process i feel satisfied that i'm trying to do something 
which will justify my position. Now I have been given a responsibility to look after the promotion of sports in India, as well as the larger issue, the youth affairs. I also have additional charge for the minority affairs and looking after the six designated minorities in India. The greatest challenge before India today is how to utilize our resources. If you listen to the general people of, the common people of India, we have many more things to do. The potential is enormous. But I normally don't talk about potential because potential on itself is nothing unless you really do something. How long we will be talking about potentials? For example, when I was a small child, we were talking about <coughs> India has potential to win medals in the Olympics. That potential never translated into reality. We always say, okay, this Olympics, we won till 1996. There was no medal. After 1952 Helsinki Olympics, we never had any medal in the individual sport. And after 1964 Tokyo Olympics, India did not win any gold medal. That was the last gold medal we won in hockey. Then in 1980, of course, the majority of the countries boycotted the Olympics because the world was divided into the Western Bloc led by the United States and the Eastern Bloc led by the Soviet Union. So Moscow Olympics, India won a gold medal in hockey. And thereafter, India did not win medals. 1996 in the Atlanta Olympics, Leander won a bronze medal in the individual lawn tennis. And thereafter, again, 2000, Karnam Maleshwari won another bronze in weightlifting in the Sydney Olympics. Then 2004, we had again won silver medal, Rajavan Rathor in shooting. Then, of course, the Beijing Olympics, 2008, where I was there also in Beijing Olympics. I was member of parliament, but I went there as part of the official team. We won three medals for the first time, multiple medals in the Olympics. And then <clears throat> London Olympics, we won six, and Rio Olympics, we came down to two. I tried to make an assessment, what I said, potential. We kept on hearing that next time we will do better, next time we will do better. But it really didn't happen. We are a young nation. Just now, before me, the education minister was speaking about the young India. This is a reality. Today, India has the largest young population in the world. We form close to 20% of the young population of the world. Can you imagine it? One nation which occupies 20% of the young population of the world. When we say we are the youngest country, 20% of the young population of the world, and if we win one or two medals in Olympics, it doesn't justify our position. So the challenges is very, very difficult, but nothing is impossible. So when I assume this responsibility, I have just tried, tried to translate something which was in my mind for a long, long time. Since 1980 Moscow Olympics, when I was small, that time we didn't have the television, but we heard the news through radio and through a magazine called Sports Star. We used to read the monthly report in the Sports Star. So there was no analytical assessment or no direct information. We were not access to the, the, the standards of the sports around the globe. So over these long years of my understanding, my thinking about, about the sports, I got this opportunity when the Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji 
assigned me this responsibility to look after the youth affairs and sports. I took it as an opportunity. Prime Minister had constituted a task force committee for the Olympics in 2017, which I am rigorously implementing now. And remember, there's a cycle of around eight to 12 years to produce a world champion. It takes time from the scouting of talents to the training, all kind of scientific inputs. And finally, at the world level, he or she has to perform. So it's a cycle of eight to 10 years. What we are implementing now in 2020, we are going to see the result in 2028 Los Angeles Olympics. That is why when I met the Indian Olympic Association and all the Sports Federation of India, as a sports minister, when I called the first meeting, I gave the target at the first instance itself. I said, Tokyo Olympics is just seven, eight months away. We will go to Tokyo Olympics with concrete preparation, but we are not going to create new champions because we are going with the existing, the talents which we have. We are not going to create uh, new, new champions. 2024 is four years away, which is the Olympics in Paris. We have fairly a reserve pool of talents, which we will showcase. But the actual potential of India will be showcased in Olympics 2028 Los Angeles. That is why I had made that big announcement as well as claim that by 2028, India will be in the top 10 in the medal tally in the Olympics. When I made this claim and this particular target, it's not rhetorical. I have made detailed preparation for that. A nation has to have its own parameters. If you see those nations which are considered to be prosperous, those nations which are considered to be rich, invariably they do good in sports. There are few exceptions where some of the countries are not very rich in terms of development, but they have excelled in few identified sports, which is because of the re reasons like genetical, regional, there are various reasons for that. There are certain things which we have to understand. Sports has been a tradition in India. We read in the, those ancient texts also, sports has always been a tradition in India. But sports could not be converted into culture in India. Sports have never been a culture in our country. That is why those who understand Hindi, why the saying was so relevant those days, people think that if you study, you will become something. If you play, you are going to be spoiled. So that is why in Hindi, it was said that Kheloge kudoge banoge kharap. Padoge likhoge banoge nawab. If you, if you play means you are going to finish, you are going to be spoiled. That means how society has progressed, there is certain defects. There is some dysfunctional approach within the society. We need to fix that wrong mindset which was prevalent in the society. The HRD minister had called the education minister's conference two months back. And we talked about education policy. I am official member in that committee because I am the youth affairs and sports minister. So during my speech, I had clearly stated, if a student scores 100% mark, but if he's physically, mentally not fit, then he doesn't serve the purpose. In life, you have to be absolutely fit and healthy. That is why we have launched this Fit India movement. If you see the index of the international parameters, India ranks very, very low, which is not a good thing for India as a young nation. Close to 70% of Indian population 
simply do not do any kind of physical exercise. Whether he's a student, officer, businessman, or any section of the society you see, 70% of the Indians do not do any kind of formal or regular exercise. It's very few, very few people. People even think that, oh, those sports persons have to be fit. Otherwise, the rest, why should I be fit? I'm not a sports person. That was the concept. Even if you see some of the housing committee project developers, they come, they say, oh, we are developing in the housing society, we are developing swimming pool, we are developing gym, we are developing some kind of uh, uh, recreational facilities. As if it is something achievement. This is nothing to show, actually. This has to be there. A house or a society or a village or a town, a colony cannot be complete without a sports facility. In the cities also, any of the developed cities you see, the pedestrian path, the cycling path, these are so integral to the beauty of a city or town. It is a must. You go to America, China, or Japan, anywhere you build a house, the tennis court, swimming pool, gym, it is a must in every house. If the house is something like a flat system, then there is a combined one. But it has to be there. And here in India, we have to tell that we are building this. See, this is a facility as if this is something extra thing we have imported. These are, you know, depiction of certain deficiency in the way we approach our life. If we don't have a sports culture in the society, how do we produce Olympic champions? We keep, you know, seeing the criticism. Oh, you go and play, but you don't win medals. If the society as a whole do not promote sports as a way of life, sports doesn't become a culture. Forget about the top 10. We will always be satisfied with one or two medals and celebrate with just one or two medals. This is something unacceptable to me. India as a nation cannot be satisfied with one or two medals in the Olympics. If anything which provides more happiness or more excitement in the society in winning the gold medal, can you think about it? Winning an Olympic gold or winning a world championship, it has such an impact on the society which cannot be measured. I was thinking in the last few months, what is that which will give more happiness than winning an Olympic medal or equivalent? Maybe when an Indian lands on the moon, it will be equivalent or it will generate more passion and interest than winning a gold medal in the Olympics. Such is the impact of achieving certain things in the field of sports. It really changes the way we think. It, it creates tremendous energy in the, in the country, amongst the people. It's unbelievable. Somehow we have not been able to think as a society. So that is why I have started thinking about the sports culture. When the Prime Minister asked me, think something about the fitness. So this concept of Fit India movement started. And we try to integrate everything into the fitness. For example, on 2nd October, we launched Plogging Run. If you tell somebody, go and clean the nala or pick up some dirty things, people think that oh, this is not my job. There are people who have to clean. There are identified people whose duty is to clean. Why should I clean? So I try to create some kind of glamour elements into swachta. Means, you jog, you walk in the park, in the highway, wherever you do, around, surrounding your colony, but while jogging, while running, while walking, at least pick up whatever you see, some plastic or something, so that you are doing something for your fitness also, and you are doing some cleaning work also. So, Swach Bharat Abhiyan is being, you know, brought into the ambit of Fit India movement. So we started this plugging run. It became glamorous. Even the film stars, the industrialists, they also started doing it. It looks good to them. They enjoy it. So you have to make things, you know, lots of fun. 
People love fun. And then Cyclothon on 18, I'm going to launch Cyclothon in India. We have the tradition of cycling. People have stopped cycling now because everybody, all, most of the people have cars and motorcycles and you know, they are using all those more uh, easier mode of transportation. So Cyclothon. Likewise, we will be doing many things which we'll incorporate into our Fit India movement. Slowly and steadily, it is changing. The corporate world. People say, many people do not understand. They come to me as a sports minister, they say, you are giving so much money to the cricket. Why don't you fund to other sports? People don't know. Government do not give money to cricket. It is people's money. The more people watch the game, the more money will come. Which corporate will fund a competition where there is not even 200 people in the stadium to watch the game? Nobody will, nobody will sponsor. If you have to put a billboard, a big signage, you have to spend, say, 10 lakhs, and nobody is going to watch. No, no corporate world will come forward. So it is actually the people who are responsible for it. Like, look at the Kabaddi. When the Kabaddi League started, I was the chief guest in the final of the Pro Kabaddi League. Some of the players, even as late as 2012-13, some of the Kabaddi players who played for India, they played in Asian Games. Kabaddi is not there in the Olympics. Hopefully, someday we will have it. So if you win Kabaddi gold medal in Asian Games, at the most the player can think about is getting a job because we gold medalists in Asian Games, so get a job in some of the forces or some of the company. Not well recognized. Today, those who play in the pro Kabaddi league, they don't think about, about joining into some kind of a job because they are earning crores. They have become hero in their society. In the same manner, if people watch, like pro Kabaddi League, if people watch game, people come and encourage the sports person, money will come. Money will come where people go. That is, the, that is what I'm talking about, the sports culture in our country. In the days to come, there is a sign of positivity which is clearly perceptible now. The sporting culture, which I'm insisting so much, is visible, it's slowly creeping into the mind of the society. That's why I had tried to change the slogan, those who understand Hindi, now I have said, it's good to study, you must study. So, padoge, likhoge, banoge, nawab, lekin khelooge, kudoge, banoge, la jawab. So, you, you do good in studies. You'll become a good person. You'll, you'll become a well-known person. But if you play, you'll become star. You'll become champion. So the new slogan which we are actually converting into action is gelling very well with the younger generation. Yesterday, we sent off a large contingent of the young athletes uh, going to Guwahati. I'm thankful to the Spice Jet for providing free aircraft for transportation, so the young players are having the experience of flying. Today I just met the Tamil Nadu Principal Secretary of Sports. Tamil Nadu has also sent a very strong team. So this Kelo India is in a, in a way driving the sports culture in our country. We have started identifying young talents from a very young age and then we are putting them into the national camps. There will be Till now, there, ha there are only senior camps. From this year, we will be having a top scheme where we will have future Olympians, future world champions, and we will provide stipends also. Not only seniors, we have to start from a very young age. From this year, we are going to have four major games in a year. It is something unique for India. Kelo India Games, which is starting tomorrow at Guwahati. Then we have University games, which we are going to have in Odisha. Then we have, you know, uh, we have uh, school games, Kelo India school games, which will be below the 
age of 17. So below 17, 17 to 21, 21 to 25, it's a university. And then in a place which is traditional games. We have indigenous games, so one year indigenous games, next year the games for the disabled people, the Byangjan. So that's how we are going to cater the entire section of the society. You, you will see the changes in the years to come. We, we are initiating today. There will be huge, tremendous changes in very near future. I'm not giving a long target, but we are going to see the change. Then we, I'm planning to have a new look into the adventure. In India, again, adventure is, a, is an alien word. We Indians are not adventurous by nature. We are not really outgoing. The few of the, few of the families have started. Few of the young generations have started, but it's not yet a culture. Adventure is so important in life. So we are probably drafting a new uh, adventure policy and probably I'm, I'm talking to many people, it should come out nicely. So we have youth policy, sports policy, adventure policy, to ensure that we move towards a direction with a clear vision. Otherwise, we were almost like a directionless with regards to sports, youth affairs, and the adventure. So there are many things. This is a subject which I can talk you know, so much to, to share with you about my ideas, my thinking. But I was told uh, when I came here, Prabhu Chawlaji actually told me to speak about Look East. So I was told to speak about Look East. But when I was discussing here, he said, no, it's better to talk about your ministry a little bit. Actually, uh, when, when I was asked to speak, the topic given to me was Look East. Look East, I will not devote much time. I normally prefer to you know, respond to the queries. I love question answer much, but since I think we are running late, I will not dwell upon the uh, look east thing in a detailed manner, but I can say this much. There is a strong misunderstanding in the way we think about the northeastern India or towards the eastern part of India. You know one thing? Before independence, Dibrugar in Assam, we were all part of Assam. Later on, we were divided into different states. Dibrugar was the highest revenue earning district in the country. It was much richer than Mumbai. Later on, Mumbai became the financial capital, so the northeast started dwindling. Now, there is a revival. In 1993, the Look East policy was launched in Singapore. I'm sure those who are sitting here, you very well understand the topography of our region. So if you remove the political boundary and you just look plainly, the whole of Southeast Asia country, the ASEAN, actually begins from Northeast India. So Northeast India is the beginning of the whole stretch of Southeast Asian countries. And the, the eastern part of the world, China, Japan, Korea, it, is, it begins from Northeast India. Only 2% has a land link with the mainland. Rest of the region is having an international boundary. I see that as a, as a situation where we can take maximum benefits. But many people see that as a problem. This, we, we have become a prisoner of our own frontiers, actually. The Northeast isolation. This, see, it, it exists in the mind. I was giving example the other day. One, one, one coach, I think boxing coach, came to me. He said he is being transferred to Guwahati. He doesn't want to Guwahati. He wants to go to Bangalore. I said, why? He said, there are some reasons, but Guwahati is so far away, Northeast is very far away, so he wants to be in Bangalore. So Delhi-Bangalore flight is three hours, and Delhi-Guwahati is two hours. So the distance in the mind, 
is a psychological distance which somehow we are unable to bridge it. When I became member of parliament for the first time, all stalwarts, Vajpayeeji, they are, they are sitting there. We get very less chance to speak in the parliament as a new member of parliament. But when I started speaking as a new MP, people said, oh, you're from Northeast. You also speak. You speak well. We thought the Northeast MPs do not speak. Except for the Purno Sangma, people think that the Northeast MPs do not speak. By the way, Indian parliament is very noisy and Northeast MPs are very quiet. So somehow, the Northeast MPs are unable to make their presence felt in the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. So I just decided that, yes, outside people talk about the muscle power in politics. I am not using muscle power, but I will use my vocal power inside the house. So I started speaking a lot. So people have identified and understood that, yes, then they started coming to know, oh, you are from Northeast, you are from Arunachal. Otherwise, there's a huge mental blockade. It's not good for our country. I'm telling you, I come from Arunachal Pradesh. From the morning to night, we call Jai Hind. We are ready to, you know, do anything for the unity of the country. But unfortunately, when, when somebody throughout lifetime talking about nationalism, patriotism, coming to Delhi and they see some people in JNU or somewhere talking about Ajadi, Ajadi, the country's interest is gone, his personal freedom has overtaken all other interests of the nation, then our people get really discouraged. They see, Are, people in the cap national capital are talking about their personal freedom more than the national interest. Why are we only talking about the national interest? So this kind of, you know, the impression is, is something which is a new discovery every day for our people. Then there will be some comment, there will be some, uh, you know, problems in some section of society which is twisted, which is, uh, you know, miscommunicated. Even one student or one person from Northeast, if it's a mistreated, or if there is some issue of racial discrimination in Delhi or anywhere in the country, it becomes a huge issue in the northeastern region. So we have to understand all this thing. It's a very sensitive issue. So about the look is, my point is, if I have to give a lecture on the look is, I will talk about economic, I'll talk about political, I'll talk about so many things. But this is such a vast subject which need not be deliberated here. But I just have to mention that Look East policy which uh, Narasimha Rao had started was not actually effective on the ground. We were just looking, e you know, we are looking east, but we are not acting. So Prime Minister Modi ji translated and changed that Look East policy into Act East. Means the policy has to be backed by action. So there are certain things going on now. And hopefully, in the last five years, certain initiatives have been taken. And in the future, I'm sure, this act, this policy, will really be a foundation for making Northeast as one of the major economic hub of our nation. Northeast, Northeast is blessed in many ways. Very few areas on this planet are as rich as Northeastern region. It's a region which is water surplus, water abundant. Many, many places are water deficient. Northeast is full of greenery, forest, full of minerals, from, from uh, petroleum to gas to uranium to coal, everything. It is so rich naturally blessed region of our country, including the spectacular uh, you know, distribution of various tribal communities, mosaic of culture. It's beautiful. For a tourist, going to Northeast is a delight. It's such a blessed land, and that land is being treated as a, 
as an area where posting there is treated as punishment. Going to northeast becomes a punishment for the rest of the people. This is something not acceptable. This needs to be changed, and I'm sure with the initiative taken by my prime minister, we all are committed to that, and this is not only to be a government initiative, people of the India, people of the country will have to change the way in which they look at Northeast, they think about Northeast. Once it is done, then the act is policy will really come into age, and I'm sure those people who are mostly living in the southern part of India, in Tamil Nadu, when you get time, you can make your vacation to Northeast, come to Arunachal Pradesh, my state, come to Northeast, enjoy, it's beautiful, and people are also very friendly, loving, emotional, but very loving, very caring. You will have best of your time, I'm sure, so I'm officially extending my invitation to all of you. Thank you very much.